Hey everybody, welcome back. There's always that one entitled friend, isn't there? Am I the a-hole for telling my friend she can't stay at mine? I, 28 female, own a digital travel magazine and make my money by writing about interesting destinations around the world. I started this business three years ago and I'm now making quite a bit of money, close to six figures, but not quite there. My friend Laura told me my business idea is stupid and I should just get a job like everybody else. I'm sorry, get a job, own a business. Now, I'm no influencer and I don't post dressy pictures on Instagram or anything like that. I just write good, honest text about destinations, good travel guides that people love. When she heard how much money I'm making from my stupid job, she decided to change strategies. Oh, that old ticket, I see. About one year ago, Laura decided to also create her own travel magazine. Shut up! when they copy you, oh my God. I have a theory. Entitled friends copy you because they want to steal your life. And of course they're low key jealous. High key jealous. And she basically copied every single article. She reworded a lot of stuff, but ultimately you can even see the structure of the articles being the same. Even the affiliates I'm using, the wording and the call to action and her main page. Buddy. Oh my God, I hate it when they mirror you. It's so, it's so creepy. This has happened like at least five times in my life and it's so painful. Like it's just so awful. And you wanna be supportive cause you're their friend. But after a certain point, it starts to get a little bit too similar. That's pretty deflating, but I never told her anything about this because I didn't wanna discourage her. And the worst part is, is it's like they think it's easy, you know? Like that's the most offensive thing. When they wanna copy you because they think it's like an easy thing for them. If you're doing it, then they can do it. Well, it can't be that hard, can it? Yes, it is. It is, everything is hard. Like anything worth doing is really, really hard. Hi guys. Okay, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to give a huge shout out to my mom, Claudia Catanio, because she just published her first novel. It's called The Canada Project, and it's now available at all major book retailers. So if you didn't know this, my mom worked as a journalist for more than 40 years. She's won a ton of writing awards here in Canada. She's retired now, but she's continuing to write books. The novel is about the fight between climate change and fossil fuels. It is a work of fiction, but it's based on true events. And it's also a love story. Anyways, guys, my mom is one of my biggest supporters and she always has been. And if you could take the time out of your day to check out this book, it would really mean the world to me and to her. And if I can help her in any way, I absolutely will. So you can order the book on Amazon or you can go to ccatanio.com to check it out. I'm so proud of you, mom. Okay, bye. I also didn't tell her how to run the business as it's taken me years to get to this point. Ultimately, she's now my competition, bro. I did hint that she should be unique and find her own voice and her own niche. Laura and I used to go to visit places together, two friends traveling together. Now it's a bit stressful because I know she's relying on me to find and scout locations and she, oh, hell no. And she just wants to join to also write about these places. Hell no. Hell to the no! Ooh, I get the heebie-jeebies just reading this. I know my way around SEO and how to do keyword research. Right, cause uh, it takes a long time to do what you're doing and be successful at it. I pick a lot of places based on this and their demand. So I find it a bit uncomfortable that she's just coming along because she knows she will get a good keyword destination out of it. Anyways, I recently moved to a town in the US that has a lot of potential for me to write about it. Plenty of demand, lots of keywords, and I've got so much to write about here. She recently asked me to come visit and stay at mine. She's gonna steal your clothes too, trust me. I have no problem with this as she is my friend. Oh, I be careful. But she told me she will bring her camera to photograph it all and wants me to take her to all the hidden gems and to show her the best things to see and do, etc. It's taken me a while to discover all these things and now she just wants to tap into my niche and write about it as well. At the end of the day, we do compete for limited space on search engines and I'm exhausted. She first discouraged me. Yeah, that's the worst part, eh? And now she's seen my success and she's decided to copy it and she continues to do so. I told her I don't want to host her if she's coming to write about my niche destination. She was livid. She, she said I'm an awful friend and that I don't want her to succeed. That I'm selfish and ignorant. I personally feel she should know that competing friends should never Across these boundaries. I'm hosting her on my expense. She should know better or at least ask me if I'm okay to write about the same destination. Am I the a-hole for telling her to pay for her own hotel and discover the locations on her own if she wants to write about it? Absolutely not. Absolutely 
absolutely not. Update, your comments were an eye opener. She's clearly not my friend. I don't know how I ignored all the signs for so long. We were friends since childhood and I guess it's hard to let go of people you grow up with. Not that it's an excuse for my inability to see her for what she is, a snake. A friend would be supportive and not manipulative. She should have understood a long time ago that what she's doing is not okay. I'm at peace with my decision and I'm glad I've told her I don't want her in my home. You are all right. It's time to block her number and move on. Good. I'm glad you know that. It's happened to me so many times throughout my journey as an artist. First, you know, as a photographer and then as an actress. And now as a YouTuber, I've just had friends that uh, want to copy me. And I think that there's something to be said for the fact that They don't want to copy you. They want to steal it. They want to steal the thing that makes you special. Get your own damn hobby and career. Dang. WTF, you've been much too nice already. What she's doing has a name. It's called plagiarism. It is theft. Yeah, especially with regards to things like writing, like written writing, written writing. That's plagiarism. You can't copy someone else's writing and piece of work without plagiarizing. That's a, that's a crime. You could sue her, honestly. Why would you keep contact with her, let alone share any travel plans with her? She may have been your friend years ago. Now she's a user and resorts to verbally and emotionally aing you when you finally express a very legitimate long overdue boundary. Not the a-hole to her, but you've been an a-hole to yourself and to all efforts invested in your business. I completely agree. And it's always when you express the boundary that all of a sudden they, they get upset with you. And it's like you kind of take candy away from a baby. Completely agree. Why would you host your competition? She isn't your friend. And while you should have put the boundary up years ago, now is the time. Stop being friends with this person. Get angry, get a lawyer. Plagiarism is illegal. OP needs to be shut down. All right, you're not the a-hole, my dear. And this goes for all of you too. Watch out and be wary of friends that copy you. Am I the a-hole for telling my friend I don't want to be her bridesmaid anymore? My friend Mary, why is it always Mary? That's always the choice for uh, the, the fake pseudonym. My friend Mary and I have known each other since we were children. We've grown apart over the past few years, but she still considers me important enough to make me a bridesmaid. Her wedding is set to be in three weeks. One reason why I sort of distanced myself from her was because of her treatment of my relationship. My boyfriend Jack and I have been together for three and a half years. He's a wonderful person, and there's no doubt in my mind that he's the man I want to marry. But Mary is under the impression that Jack is too good for me. I'm gonna what? Hold the phone. Jack comes from a very wealthy background. His parents are certainly very wealthy. He was practically guaranteed a lavish life from the moment that he left the womb. This is in stark contrast to my childhood. I grew up in a low income neighborhood, often wondering where my next meal was or how I was gonna pay the bills at a young age. I'm grateful and proud for where I am today. Jack is considered to be conventionally attractive, always looking like he should be on some magazine or billboard somewhere. Jack's good looks and the background have led Mary to believe that Jack deserves better than me. I'm sorry, I thought that we want the best for our friends. According to her, there's no way I could have pulled someone so attractive and rich. Uh, what? It's pretty disheartening to hear those things constantly and it does kind of take a toll on you and the friendship. That's not a friendship, honey. You guys are frenemies. <laughs> Whenever Jack is around, she's quite polite and respectful, never once making those comments. Eventually, the comments stopped. Mary invited me for lunch with her fiance and his friend, Gary. Is this going where I think it's going? From the moment I arrived, Mary and her fiance were consumed in their own conversation, paying no attention to the both of us. It was fine as Gary seemed to be a great lad with great chat. He asked me why I was single and I told him that I was in a happy, committed, relationship. He was very taken aback by my answer. He told me Mary had set up a blind date of sorts for the both of us. Oh my goodness. Uh, what? I was very confused and slightly angry. Uh, yeah. I didn't want to be confrontational at lunch, especially in public. So I just carried on with the lunch. Luckily, Gary wasn't upset and ended up making a few jokes about the whole ordeal. I called Mary later on in the day and asked her a ton of questions about why she thought it was okay to do that. At first she tried to deny it, but then she just tried to justify it saying that Gary is a man who's more in my league. Oh. oh, and since he was also a groomsman, we needed to get to know each other better. Oh my goodness, this is awful. I was shocked by her bluntness. So I just told her that I didn't want to be her bridesmaid anymore. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the least you could have done. Granted, it was a pretty impulsive decision, but I still stand by it. Mary didn't take it well, trying to apologize and saying it was a mistake. It's been a few days and her fiance has been texting me, asking me to suck it up for the wedding. I feel pretty conflicted right now. Edit, Jack does know about the date. I wouldn't keep that from him. You're not the a-hole. That is sneaky and weird. 
On what planet is that okay? Not on this one, that's for sure. You're absolutely not the a-hole and you should have dumped this friend the minute she told you Jack was too good for you. Here, here. Don't let her change your mind. She sounds kind of jealous. Uh, yeah. But this conniving behavior is insane. Be sure to block any more flying monkeys coming your way about just suck it up for the wedding. <laughs> suck this up for the wedding, huh? Huh? Vaffanculo. This girl is not your friend. She's jealous your partner is good looking and well off. I would not only not be her bridesmaid, but I also wouldn't attend the wedding. She has no respect for your relationship. I would simply tell her fiance that you stand by your decision and he should be questioning whether or not he wants to marry someone that acts this way. That is what's up. Ugh, not the a-hole, God. My friend expects me to include her in everything. This already hits home a little bit. Hello, I know this post might seem very trivial compared to a lot of the stuff on here, but it's something that's been bugging me since the beginning of quarantine. I have a friend, we'll call her Sarah, not Mary. <laughs> she uses me as a crutch a lot and she said this herself and even her mom told her that she needs to stop doing that. It never bothered me too much, but it seems to have worsened because of quarantine. Me and Sarah's extended friend group tends to use Discord a lot and she always used to complain that she felt left out because she didn't have a Discord despite making literally no effort to get it and somehow made me feel guilty for it. Oh is already hitting home. I eventually persuaded her into getting it, hoping that the undeserved guilt trips would end, but it made it worse. We have a Discord server for our extended friend group, and because there's a solid 25 of us in the group, there's always some sort of voice call going on in there. And now whenever I join that voice call, Sarah asks me why I didn't ask her to join. Like, why you gotta turn it into something where I did something wrong? Sorry, this is clearly something that I've experienced. Not the Discord thing, but <laughs> oh yeah, I should probably specify, she'll only join if I go out of my way to call her separately on my mobile and tell her that there's a call happening. Oh my God. I have to be the one to check for her. She makes no effort to get involved in any of this stuff on her own accord. But back to what I was saying, she basically guilted me for going on a call with my friends without her. This is actually the reason why I'm no longer friends with my entitled friend that I keep talking about. And whenever I'm on the phone to just her and I say something like, oh yeah, X said this the other day, she keeps asking when, where, which call, who was there, why I didn't tell her. It's exhausting. Oh my gosh. What is this? Why is this common? This is so weird. I found it so bizarre. Last night, about six of us were in a call together watching dumb short meme videos on YouTube together. Sarah was there for a bit, but had to leave early for some reason. We came across this funny dance video while she was gone and in the call decided we were all gonna recreate it together. It was mentioned in the text chats this morning and I tagged everyone who was in the call for the vid to recreate the video. And almost immediately, Sarah started calling me. I didn't answer her, so she called again, but I still didn't answer because I knew damn well she was calling to ask why she wasn't tagged, why she wasn't involved. Sorry if this didn't make a lot of sense. I'm not good at gathering thoughts, but basically how do I get her to understand that I'm allowed to talk to my friends without her and that she doesn't have to be involved in everything and that if she wants to be involved, do it on your own accord. How do I say it without giving her room to try and guilt trip me? There's nothing you can say that's gonna make her not guilt trip you. Honestly, with people like this, I honestly feel like they're a little bit narcissistic. Everything is about them. They make themselves the victim in every situation and there's no winning. There really is no winning and you're not gonna have a coherent conversation with that person. They're never gonna apologize. They're never gonna see where they went wrong. I would distance yourself because that's, ugh. it sucks because you're losing a friend. It sucks to lose a friend. Like it's the worst. It's like a breakup. But like, come on, man, this is like so high school. It's not even high school. It's like element preschool. Clearly she's got some unresolved issues with feeling left out. And now she's hypersensitive to whenever she feels left out. And she's taking that out on you. That's not your fault. You're your own person. And especially if you don't mean to leave her out, not your problem. She can also get involved on her own accord. Like you said, subscribe.